Hi everyone, this is Doc Ina, and the topic is on breach delivery. This is our main reference, Williams Obstetrics, 24th edition, chapter 28, breach. This is our lecture outline. So just a quick review, this is the classification or the different types of breach presentation. With a frank breach presentation, the lower extremities are flexed at the hips and extended at the knees, and thus the feet lie in close proximity to the head. A complete breach differs in that one or both knees are flexed. With incomplete breach presentation, one or both hips are not flexed, and one or both feet or knees lie below the breach, such that a foot or knee is lowermost in the birth canal. A footling breach is an incomplete breach with one or both feet below the breach. This is the Leupold's maneuver of a breech presentation. LM1, head. LM2, either fetal back left or fetal back right. LM3, if, it, if the fetus is not yet engaged, then the breech is movable above the pelvic inlet. And LM4, after engagement, the fourth maneuver shows the firm breech to be beneath the symphysis. In doing internal examination, how do we differentiate now if it's a frank breech presentation versus a face presentation? So with careful examination, the finger encounters muscular resistance with the anus, whereas the firmer, less yielding jaws are felt through the mouth. The finger, upon removal from the anus, may be stained with meconium. The ischial tuberosities and the anus form a straight line, whereas the mouth and the malar eminences form a triangular shape. Here are some factors to consider in deciding the route of delivery, whether we do a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section in a breech fetus. First is fetal characteristics. Maybe the fetus is large or the fetal head is in a hyperextended position. We also consider the pelvic dimensions, whether we're dealing with a contracted pelvimetry like a contracted mid-pelvis, inlet, or outlet. Coexistent pregnancy complications, maybe the patient is hypertensive. Operator experience, is the ob trained or experienced in doing a breech delivery? Patient preference, and hospital capabilities. For a preterm breech fetus at 24 to 32 weeks AOG, a planned cesarean delivery appears to confer a survival advantage. When the fetus is at 32 to 37 weeks, the decision will now depend on the fetal weight. The Maternal Fetal Medicine Committee of the SOGC recommends that vaginal breech delivery is reasonable when the estimated fetal weight is more than 2,500 grams. Here are some of the factors favoring cesarean delivery of the breech fetus. First is lack of operator experience, patient request for cesarean delivery, a large fetus, apparently healthy and viable preterm fetus either with active labor or with indicated delivery, severe fetal growth restriction, fetal anomaly incomp incompatible with vaginal delivery, prior perinatal death or neonatal birth trauma, Incomplete or footling breech presentation, hyperextended head, pelvic contraction, or a prior cesarean delivery. There are three general methods of breech delivery through the vagina. First is a spontaneous breech delivery where the fetus is expelled entirely, spontaneously without any traction or manipulation other than support of the newborn. Partial breech extraction is when the fetus is delivered spontaneously as far as the umbilicus, but the remainder of the body is extracted or delivered with operator traction and assisted maneuvers with or without maternal expulsive efforts. And the total breech extraction is when the entire body of the fetus is extracted by the obstetrician. So this is how we do a partial breech extraction. So a few slides back, I mentioned that in a partial breech extraction, the breech is allowed to deliver spontaneously up to the level of the umbilicus. So the posterior hip will deliver usually from the 6 o'clock position, followed by the anterior hip, 
and this will be followed by an external rotation to a sacrum anterior position. So the mother should be encouraged to continue to push at this time. So as the fetus continues to descend, the legs are sequentially delivered by splinting the medial aspect of each femur with the operator's fingers positioned parallel to each femur and by exerting pressure laterally to, to sweep each leg away from the midline. So follow, following delivery of the legs, the fetal bony pelvis is grasped with both hands using a cloth towel moistened with warm water. The fingers should rest on the anterior superior iliac crest and the thumbs on the sacrum, minimizing the chance of fetal abdominal soft tissue injury. Maternal expulsive efforts are used in conjunction with downward traction to effect delivery. The cardinal rule in successful breech extraction is to employ steady, gentle downward traction until the lower halves of the scapulas are delivered, making no attempt at delivery of the shoulders and arms until one axilla becomes visible. As the scapulas become visible, the fetal back tends to turn spontaneously towards the side of the mother to which it was originally directed. The appearance of one axilla indicates that the time has arrived for shoulder delivery. It doesn't make any difference which so shoulder is delivered first, whether it's the anterior, posterior, or the left and the right. And so, so when the scapulas are become visible, the trunk is rotated in such a way that the anterior shoulder and arm appear at the vulva and can easily be released and delivered first. The body of the fetus is then rotated 180 degrees in the reverse direction to deliver the other shoulder and arm. So once the body of the fetus is delivered, then there's the after coming head that is next to be delivered. And there are many maneuvers to do this, the most common of which is the Morisot maneuver. So in Morisot maneuver, first, the fetal body rests on the palm of the hand and the forearm of the OB gynecologist or the operator. Then, the index and the middle finger of the one hand are applied over the maxilla, mainly to flex the head of the fetus. So, two fingers of the other hand are hooked over the fetal neck and grasping the shoulders. At the same time, you have an assistant that employs gentle suprapubic pressure to keep the head flexed. Downward traction is concurrently applied until the suboccipital region appears under the symphysis. The body then is elevated towards the maternal abdomen and the mouth, nose, brow, and eventually the occiput emerge successively over the perineum. Another maneuver to deliver the aftercoming head is the modified Prague maneuver, and this is a technique that is employed when the back of the fetus fails to rotate to the anterior or fetal back down. So in this maneuver, um, we have two fingers of one hand grasping the shoulders of the back down fetus from below, while the other hand draws the feet up and over the maternal abdomen. We can also use forceps to deliver the aftercoming head in the form of Piper's forceps. Piper's forceps have a downward arch in the shank to accommodate the fetal body and lack a pelvic curve. This shape permits a direct application of the cephalic curve of the blade along the length of the maternal vagina and fetal parietal bone. The blades of the forceps should not be applied to the aftercoming head until it has been brought into the pelvis by gentle traction combined with suprapubic pressure and the fetal part should be engaged. Suspension of the body of the fetus in a towel effectively holds the fetus up and helps keep the arms and cord out of the way as the forceps blades are applied. If all the maneuvers fail to deliver the aftercoming head, here are some of the other options. We can do a Dorsen's incision where we incise the cervix at the 2 o'clock and the 10 o'clock position. 
Other alternatives include the following. Intravenous nitroglycerin, typically 100 micrograms. This, this will provide cervical relaxation. We can also call our anesthesiologist to start a general anesthesia. We can do Zavanelli maneuver where we replace the fetus higher into the vagina and uterus and then we do a cesarean section. And lastly, we can do symphysiotomy where we surgically divide the intervening symphysial cartilage and much of its ligamentous support to widen the symphysis pubis up to 2.5 cm. At times, total extraction of a complete or incomplete bleach may be required and this is what we call total bleach extraction. So a hand is introduced through the vagina and both fetal feet are grasped. The ankles are held with the second finger lying between them. With gentle traction, the feet are brought through the introitus. If difficulty is experienced in grasping both feet, first one foot should be drawn into the vagina but not through the introitus and then the other foot is advanced in a similar fashion. Now, both feet are grasped and pulled through the vulva simultaneously. As the legs begin to emerge through the vulva, downward gentle traction is continued. As the legs emerge, successively higher portions are grasped, first the calves and then the thighs. When the breech appears at the vaginal outlet, gentle traction is applied until the hips are delivered. As the buttocks emerge, the back of the fetus usually rotates to the anterior. The thumbs are placed over the sacrum and the fingers over the hips and breech extraction is completed as previously described for a partial breech extraction. During complete extraction of a frank breech, moderate traction is exerted by a finger in each groin and, added by, and aided by a generous episiotomy. Once the breech is pulled through the introitus, the steps described for partial breech extraction are then completed. These maneuvers are also used during the cesarean delivery of the frank breech through the hysterotomy incision. If moderate traction does not affect delivery, then vaginal delivery can be accomplished only by breech decomposition. This involves manipulation within the birth canal to convert the frank breech into a footling breech. It is accomplished more readily if the membranes have ruptured only recently and it becomes extremely difficult if there is minimal amniotic fluid. In such cases, the uterus may have become tightly contracted around the fetus. So, pharmacological relaxation by general anesthesia, intravenous magnesium sulfate, or a metamimetic agent such as terbutaline may be required. Breach decomposition is accomplished by a maneuver attributed to Pinard, and this is why we call this the Pinard maneuver. It aids in bringing the fetal feet within reach of the operator. So as seen in the picture, two fingers are carried up along one extremity to the knee to push it away from the midline. Spontaneous flexion usually follows and the foot of the fetus is felt to impinge on the back of the hand. The fetal foot may be grasped and brought down. We can also do version in delivering a breech fetus. So with this procedure, the fetal presentation is altered by physical manipulation either substituting one pole of a longitudinal presentation for the other or converting an oblique or transverse lie into a longitudinal presentation. According to whether the head or breech is made the presenting part, the operation is designated cephalic or podalic version respectively. With external version, the manipulations are performed exclusively through the, through the abdominal wall. With internal version, they are accomplished inside the uterine cavity. So for external cephalic version, this is attempted before labor in a woman who has reached 36 weeks age of gestation with a breech fetus. Before this time, a breech presentation still has a high likelihood of correcting spontaneously. And if performed too early, time may allow a return back to breech. Last, if version causes a need for immediate delivery, complications of iatrogenic preterm delivery generally are not severe. Version is contraindicated if vaginal delivery is not an option. Examples include placenta previa or non-reassuring fetal status. Other contraindications include rupture of membranes, uterine malformation, multifetal gestation, and recent uterine bleeding. 
Uterine incision is also a relative contraindication. Several factors can improve the chances of a successful version attempt, and these include multiparity, abundant amniotic fluid, unengaged presenting part, fetal size that's 2,500 to 3,000 grams, posterior placenta, and if the patient is not obese. So the external cephalic version should be carried out in an area that has ready access to a facility equipped to perform an emergency cesarean delivery. So in this picture, this is a forward roll of the fetus. So each hand grasps one fetal pole and the fetal buttocks are elevated from the maternal pelvis and displaced laterally. The buttocks are then gently guided toward the fundus while the head is directed toward the pelvis. If the forward roll is unsuccessful, then a backward flip may be attempted. Version attempts are discontinued for excessive discomfort, persistently abnormal fetal heart rate, or after multiple failed attempts. For internal podalic version, this maneuver is used only for delivery of a second twin. With the membranes preferably still intact, a hand is inserted into the uterine cavity to turn the fetus manually. The operator seizes one or both feet and, and draws them through the fully dilated cervix while using the other hand transabdominally to push the upper portion of the fetal body in the opposite direction. This is then followed by breech extraction. That's it for this lecture. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe in my channels, my YouTube channel, Ina Irabon, and my WordPress site. Thank you!